Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. This is a video that's a little bit different. It's going to be a series of videos that I'm going to make here in the countryside in Guadalajara. I'm in the what's called La Maleza uh, because it's um, windy. So I have to get right into the tree so that the wind doesn't ruin the audio. So what's this about? This video is about um, helping people with the past tense in Spanish and I'm going to do a little series on it. Why, why do this? I was just looking at the, um, the books that we have on the market and they're available in Amazon and our most popular book, the book that sells the most is called Perfecting the Past in Spanish and I know exactly why that's the most popular book. It's the most popular book because the past and controlling the past is probably the most, the biggest challenge that we have as students of Spanish language. And um, not only that, but the preterite and the imperfect tend to be, I've got an ant crawling up my leg, I'll just make sure that that's gone. Um, the, pa the preterite past, which is I ate, and the imperfect past, which is I was eating, I used to eat, they're the tends to be the, the most challenging part of the past. Okay, so I'm going to start and I'm going to give you some very simple tips. Sorry, I'm being distracted by an ant, but it's not an ant, it's just a fly, so that's okay. I don't, I, I, I don't mind the ants either, I just don't like them. I've got shorts on and it was making its way up my leg, but it's not an ant, it's a fly. So. Let's start with a nice little tip on the preterite and the imperfect. For those who followed Lightspeed Spanish before, you will have heard this, but I want to explain the importance of it. The rule is this, if you can measure it, or if you measure it, you must preterite. Okay? What does that mean? That means that, and this is only when you're choosing between the imperfect past, do I say, uh, comí? Or do I say comía? Do I say hablé? Or do I say hablaba? Okay? So, I ate or I was eating, or I spoke or I was speaking. This is, this is where this rule applies. It doesn't apply outside of that, but it does here. So, if you measure it, you preter it. So, what does that mean? I'll turn around because the, the sun might be shining on the camera. That means that any kind of measurement in the past, you must use the preterite. So, for example, I'll give you an example that, that's wrong. You can't say, you can't say, hablaba durante una hora. So, I was talking for an hour. Now, in English you can, I was talking for an hour. Absolutely. But in Spanish, you can't use hablaba durante una hora. You've broken a fundamental rule, which is if you can measure it, you must preter it. So w because you put on una hora, then you don't have any choice. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Preter it. Hablé una hora. Hablé durante una hora. Hablé por una hora. If you're from Latin America, here in Spain, they just tend to say hablé una hora. Right? So there's no way around that. You can't say, well, could I say hablaba una hora? Eh, no. You just can't. You can't do it. You've measured it. It's the same as if you say, um, I was there for an hour. Okay? I was there for an hour. Now, you've measured it with time. There is no option. You cannot say estaba allí una hora. You can't do it. It's against the law. The, the grammar police will come and arrest you for saying estaba una hora. Of course they won't, but what will happen is if you were talking to a native and you break this rule, this is, this is one of the fundamental rules and it's when you're talking to a native and you break this rule, you will notice their face go like that, like ooh, bum note. You've hit a bum note when you're singing the melody of Spanish. So that, that's because you've measured it, una hora, and so you can't say Estaba allí una hora. No, no. Estuve allí una hora. If you measure it, you preter it. All right? So that's the really the hard and fast rule. It's one of the rules that cannot be broken. It's one of the rules that you will get an, a reaction from a native speaker if you mix it up. 
Last tip, be very wary of the hidden measurements. There are hidden measurements, all right? It isn't as obvious as a day, one hour, right? You can get this, a long time, all right? A long time, that's a measurement. So, estuve allí un largo tiempo, tiempo largo. Estuve allí mucho tiempo. You mention a time, even if you don't actually say how many minutes or hours, that's a measurement, okay? You can't say, estaba allí mucho tiempo. You just can't do it. So you've got things like mucho tiempo, eh, poco tiempo, todo el día. That's a measurement, all day, right? Todo el día. That's got to be preterite. You can't use the imperfect. Todo el día, right? La mañana, toda la mañana, all morning. That's a measurement. You must preterite. Okay, so that's the first tip of, there are going to be a few. When you measure it, you preterite. All right, so we're only focused on the preterite. We'll get into the imperfect later on. All right, so that's your first tip. If you measure it, preterite. And, and watch out for those hidden measurements where you are actually measuring it, but you're just not giving a number. All right. Bueno, chicos. Hasta luego. Hasta la próxima. Adiós.